Jam on toast! This broadcast is inappropriate for all ages, right here on the Watch Spot! I am Camry, and <laughs> I did those screens backwards. That's alright. I'm continuing to experiment with Fire Talk and see if I can do it. We've had a reoccurring issue uh, with this computer shutting down because uh, Windows 10 is retarded. Uh, that's the real answer. Uh, apparently, Time Broker will spin up uh, infinite memory loops. Um, and when I switch that off, it switched something else off. And I re enabled the other thing. But the first bit is still disabled, so hopefully it won't cut short. But in the interest of time and effort, etc., etc., let's let's get, let's move on. Um, okay. So as usual, we will start with rooster teeth. Um, I do not remember where this came from uh, here, and I need to adjust this because I'm used to using the browser. And I can't see the chat and do this. I wasn't going to worry about it, but it's bothering me. There we go. Okay. Um, so, there was no on the spot last week. Let's start there. Uh, and I don't remember where this RTA came from, but uh, was it Michael, I think, was talking? Michael and Jeff were talking about uh, Gary Busey on an airplane. Like, there's this whole, like, running joke of him, or he is a running joke, whatever you want to say where he's just, like, he's always loud, he, he's not belligerent, but he's, like, socially impeding uh, and intimidating because he's yelling at you, you can't hear, uh, so he, he dominates control of the <laughs> conversation, apparently, um, to the point where he's frustrating. Uh, but if you don't know who Gary Busey is, he's the one, Amazon Fire TV Stick! That guy. Uh, I apologize for headphone wearers, but eh. so getting bused is a new rooster teeth verb. I really like the invented word. Um, I don't. I've mixed feelings. I'm hoping for our red versus blue that this was the last episode because they ended on a really good note. Um, it's overall kind of anticlimactic. I think once I go back and watch it, it'll be a lot better because it's always better in movie form uh, than the week to week nonsense. But I, I feel like the expectation was here, and then it was it, the actuality was here every time for the past like four episodes. Uh, I know part of it is the fact that the raw animation looks better than the machinima, so it's kind of like, well, why are we even bothering with the machinima anymore? Like, if you want to explode it into its into a fully animated series, why not? Um, you guys kill yourselves doing it for Ruby, which is fantastic, by the way. If you haven't watched Ruby, uh, it's R-W-B-Y. Go over to RoosterTeeth.com. Go to Shows. Is it on there? Yes. Go to Shows, and it's R-W-B-Y. Go to Ruby and watch through it. The first episode is a little rough. They were trying to smooth a couple things out, but uh, technically the, the second episode takes off, and eventually they do stop doing that black silhouette thing, which is a shame because I actually liked the black silhouette thing, but as they got more models up, they, they had more background characters to walk around. Um, so, yeah, they've done such a good job with that show. They really have. Um, and it's it's Western anime. I don't, I don't give a shit uh, what you people say. Yay, so now that I've, I've alienated someone... Let's let's go over to Keek and Sundry. Um, you know what? I know they have a co-optitude this week. I didn't see what it was. I feel stupid. Um, I, I keep up with a couple shows here that I really like. Uh, I'm behind with Titan's Grave. Sorry, I need to catch up. Uh, but I had some scheduling issues this weekend. Um, but... I will catch up, and as I catch up, I will be doing bad summaries that you can find on Jam on Toast, 528 on the YouTubes, um, or I think if you can look up hashtag bad summaries, and that'll, you can find it that way as well. Um, but Titan's Grave was just, it was so good up to the point where I watched, I'm really excited to go back and watch more. Um, however, what I've been excited for for the longest in Critical Role, I'm, I'm just ashamed. I'm, there's no way I'm catching up to that. They'll end the thing by the time I catch up. It's just how it is with that many three-hour episodes. Uh, I've got an episode of Twilight Chorus to watch. 
<laughs> Dominions of Esalen finally launched on Sunday. Uh, you can watch the archive versions by Monday evening at the very latest. Uh, YouTube.com slash The Weirdlings. Um, the Weirdlings have started their own new live D&D session. And if they would just stop the fucking branding issue, I talked to Mark about this at some point. I and he said he was gonna, he, it wasn't the plan that they, he was going to decouple it. But it hasn't happened, so... Eh. <laughs> Love you, Mark, if you actually see this, but... Um, it needs its own logo, it needs its own brand, because they're... It's not H HOA. It, they are different things. They are different characters, they are different world universes. Um, the, they operate under different laws because they have different DMs. Even Twilight Chorus and HOA are not the same thing, even though Brandon's the DM for both. They're different worlds, and I it just... Come on, they've got... Hopefully after this first episode, they see that they got their audience, um, and they'll, they'll rebrand it properly under Dominion of Esalen. Until then, I've got a really shitty logo that I'm going to use. If you want to see anything else we're up to, I, go I ahead and click the annotations, and they'll take you to our awesome other channels. With Dominion of Esalen. I, they're two different products. Um, and you will get two different experiences. That's the key point, is that when you watch a HOA, it's a production piece. Um, that it gets edited together painstakingly, and then Dominions of Esalen, there's minimal editing, if any. Um, for that, there's just a lot of <laughs> live technical issues, uh, which are probably not any better, but they're more time efficient. Uh, and I'm sure they, they ran into the same issues with Critical Role versus uh, Titan's Grave, though, oddly enough, it went the other way around. They did the live Critical Role first, and then Titan's Grave was the, the production piece, um, which has better production quality, but I don't blame the Daily Dot for that, because they were nice enough to host for the Weirdlings. Um, good stuff. Um, Co-op to that happened. Uh, Lorecroft of the Temple of Osiris. That's one I'm, I actually think I want to go check out. I don't watch a lot of gameplay videos. I've been tuning in here and there because I needed 10, 20 minute videos to just eat some time because I had some weird scheduling things. Um, or like my lunch um, is actually a good time to do that. And Twister Mania was funny enough that I was just like, yeah, that's going to be good. Um, and the flog is still a thing that's happening. The last one she did was with a theremin. So if you're into theremins, go for it. That's all, I mean, that's all I'm going to say there. Um, the Quidditch one was really good. I, I, really, I did like that one. Uh, and her pole dancing was actually really good. So there, it had a strong start and it's got a couple bumps, but you can't be all up, otherwise you're never up. So let's, let's have our ups and downs and enjoy it. Okay, so I think that's it for Geek and Sundry, so that ends our full screen. Like I talked about, the Weirdlings are doing their things. They're still doing Heroes of Awesome, so it's going to be every other week, is supposedly, I think, is um, they're, they're doing Heroes of Awesome, and they're going to alternate with Domains of Esland. Um, I think just for... Oh, God, I don't know. Um, sanity's sake, they're not trying to do weeklies for both those. They might one day. One day, um, I, I don't really plug uh, other YouTubers that much here, but if you were watching this and you haven't had a second, go watch uh, Mr. Harry Britt. Uh, check out some of his stuff. I, I got some footage for him. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this past VidCon, I uh, managed to get it up, and I finally watched it, and uh, I, I, I giggled quite hard. Um... You know what? I'm looking through my YouTube history and, like, uh, I don't know. There's some things that we shouldn't talk about, and there's a bunch of gameplay footage because I did go on, like, a kick. Uh, I found some uh, Asperger autism folks that I'm going to try to check out a little bit because uh, that was interesting. Um, oh, if you were looking for a good musical song that you haven't heard before, try Hold On by the Gospel Whiskey Runners. Uh, that was... A nice treat I ran across um, through a recommendation. And I'm looking through it. Uh, oh, Tabletop. I forgot about Tabletop. Uh, I love Tabletop, even though I hate that fucking word. Um, 
I hate that Will and Felicia turned it into a mainstream term for board gaming. It's not. Tabletop gaming has always been when you play with the tabletop as the board. If you have a board, it's a board game. If you have cards, it's a card game. Because you play things on a table, like you fuck on a table, that's not a board game, a tabletop game. Though somebody's probably going to argue that it is. Um, so there's that. Uh, but my mystics, uh, I, I don't approve, is that the word? Even though my favorite board game is Super Dungeon Explorer, uh, I don't really approve of the RPG in a box. I, I think it belittles it a little bit, but that's the part of the point, is to break it down so that you can have an uh, acceptable amount of RPG available to you quickly and readily. Um, and things like Mice and Mystics, it's, it's the same thing thing every time, but your adventures are just going to be different because different people can play different roles. Um, the, the probability of the dice is going to change the experience entirely. You might have one episode or one adventure where everything goes swimmingly, and you might have another one where it all goes horribly, and you die a horrible death. Um, and then you may choose to take one route, and you may choose to take another the next time. It's There are lots of uh, different ways to play any RPG, regardless of what I, I'm claiming is quality. Um, Super Dungeon Explorer, I definitely think, is not an RPG. It's more of a battle arena game. Uh, some people call it a dungeon crawler. and To me, it's really not. It's it's a battle arena. It's um, You're just fighting things. There's no fluff. There's no quest. There's no like objective. It's just kill things till everything is dead. And that's a battle arena. Um, they're coming out with a video game, and they're coming out with... This is not Play Spot. This is Watch Spot. So I should probably deter this a little bit. But my point is, is that if you like RPGs, if you like tabletop, if you like board games, go check out the two-part tabletop uh, episode, Will Wheaton playing My Submissives with his family. It's a good treat. Let's, let's get on to actual media, I think. Um... DVD rentals, uh, I've reduced this drastically, and it could be just mostly because nothing interesting was really coming out. There will be some things uh, coming in eventually, so I'm going to leave, I mean, I am going to leave a subscription to Disc, but mostly, if I watch anything on Netflix, it's there, but I haven't had any activity for over a month now, so I just ate that ten bucks. Um, if you don't know who Judy Greer is, I, I don't blame you, but shame on you, all the same. Um, she is a beautiful, talented actress. If you watch Big Bang Theory, she was the slutty doctor that came over and wanted to role play um, with Raj, Leonard, and Howard. Uh, Sheldon's friend. Uh, that should narrow it down, honestly. Um, so, yeah, so I actually powered through the entire first season yesterday. Because Judy Greer, I follow her on Twitter. She had mentioned it a couple times. I was like, oh, she does a thing. Uh, and I, I feel like an idiot because apparently for a whole year she did this thing. Um, and the show was amazing. I meant to bring up IMDb to, to read off the cast because eight minutes in, I, I tweeted her. Uh, so there's proof. Um, I, I'm just in love with the cast. Like, they, the best... The husband, the shitty husband, the, the shitty husband's best friend, um, the mutual uh, horrible friend, um, like, they're all great, and they're not people like you would rec you, you might recognize, but I don't think you'd be able to name them. Uh, even Judy Greer, which is a shame, you need to go, get your tail out of here, uh, is a shame because I've just, I've seen her in so many things as the the support role or whatever, and it's like, when is she going to be the main character? I always liked her better. Um, and it, it, it helps that she's pretty. Like, I, I'm totally into that. Uh, and there are some scenes in this, if if she is your thing, there's some scenes in this that are going to do it for you and make you uh, just watch those episodes on repeat. But, um, Nate Faxon is the shitty husband. Brett Gelman is the... Uh, the <laughs> the annoying mutual friend. He was in uh, Go On uh, <laughs> as the engineer. Um, <laughs> he's, he's like a bearded, bald guy who's like a little bit overweight, and he always plays like the weird guy with the big smile. So like Lena does? 
but all beard, not just the little thing I have. Uh, and the Jenny Slate, Slate uh, plays Jess. I like Jenny Slate. I saw her in something. I think she was playing a comedian. I'm pretty sure they all consider themselves comedians, even if they aren't like stand-ups. Um, they're like they're, it's it's just good. It's all about the the stereotypical horrors of being married and how like one day flows on the next so it's very episodic it's like oh this is the day where she tells him to go get a mistress and he buys a puppy um that's literally like in the first 10 minutes uh like eight minutes in i'm like okay i love this cast and then two minutes later all that happened um at least that's my recollection so and it's short there uh they are 20 minute episodes um, the pilot's a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, they're, they're probably on average they're about 20 minutes. I powered through the whole thing in one night. Uh, I was just playing Minecraft watching that. Uh, when I should have been watching CBS. Because I'm behind on Under the Dome and Zoo again. Which is starting to be a horrible, horrible excuse to have to say repeatedly. Uh, let's see. Let's open these up and figure out where we're at. Because I'm going to have to watch these after we close this down. Uh, so that I am up because I'm going to have to catch up with the episodes later. So, not Legacy, but the one before that is the last thing I watched. And Zoo, I know I watched Sleuth. It's the one where they're in Paris. Like, the whole thing with the bats was so interesting. Like, I was behind. Um, because they actually added, like, some legitimacy to all this insane theory about what's happening with the animals. It's The bats are being attracted to the, the, the wavelengths because they can pick it up. Um, so they're attacking them. Like, so now we have, like, a sensitivity shift. Instead of, like, lions having telepathy, we have bats don't like electronic devices. That's fine. That's acceptable. Uh, they got a bit of a scrape there in South America, but, um, yeah, so I am caught up on that. Um, but, oh yeah, that's right, they went to Paris and they had to deal with, ar like, armored bears. Like, bears are, are pretty terrifying all on their own. They're gonna wreck some shit. Like, they, you don't, they don't need, like, super armored skin. You basically have super villains running around at that point. Um, and then we, we, had, we found the guy who ran away, that's right. We found the guy who, who uh, ran away, who was talking to the wolves. Uh, he was infected with uh, the what we've come to know as the mother cell, um, and he tried to come up with some kind of concoction to like fix his eye, and I think uh, it ended up killing him. And we had to deal with the dirty FBI agent, who I don't even know if he was an FBI agent. It's really a fucking stupid thing to have to worry about. Okay, I will kill you dead. I will. Um... So, like, it, it's amazing that they even got their hands on the mother cell, and then all the problems that have resulted from that uh, are incredible. I can't think where they're going to go from here, because uh, after dealing with the armored bears and the other guy being put out of the picture and the other guy being put out of the picture, um, they're kind of back to square one, and they don't have clear information on what all the mammals are doing, because they, there haven't been any reptiles like the other. It's been all mammals. Uh, the horses... Uh, lions, dogs, cats, uh, like domestic short hair cats, uh, or domestic cats, bats, um, I don't think we've, uh, bears now, um, and bears are the ones that up the ante because lions were, lions were psychic, uh, bats can hear other frequencies, I don't know, but bears are actually metamorphosizing, uh, which, which indicates, especially because they don't have the defined pupil, it indicates that they have advanced forms of the, the disease or the serum involved. So either they're test subjects, which I think is what it was, is that they were escaped test subjects. Um, but they've got to be more directly involved between the production and the application. Um, okay, so that's Zoo. Under the Dome. Um, oh yeah, it's become very clear that Christine is going to die, and she doesn't care. She's that uh, drawn in and indoctrinated that she's just like, that's my role now, is that I will die and be replaced by this super baby that the lady and Barbie are having. Uh, and she is super individualized. It's really weird how they turn, like, I thought it was a good, like, we're all going to be connected, like the skitters in Falling Skies. Like, we're all going to be connected, we're all going to 
live as one. We're all one thing. We're, uh, what do they call it? The kinship. Uh, but no, there are like a few specialized individuals who are not they have access to the kinship, but they're not part of the kinship, and they, they are the ones that direct things. So it's very much like the Ishvini uh, from Fallen Skies directing the It's amazing like what kind of similarities that you will find between shows when you actually look deep enough. Um, so this alien invasion is only going to get weirder because they're actively trying to save people who do not want to be saved. But they did figure out like it's it's... They, they say it's emotional based. Uh, I would say it's fear based in self preservation. Um, I'm fantastic, by the way, because I didn't even notice that when I did check camera. Um, and I'm dressed all fancy because I could give a fuck today. Should have put on a proper shirt, though. Would have saved me this. Well, now, now my lesson's learned. It smells nice. Um, so there is that. Uh, yeah, I will throw you across the room. Uh, for anyone who thinks that's me being mean to my cat, I've done it on camera several times. He doesn't mind it. He's just stupid. Um, yeah, so nothing for Amazon Prime because I didn't watch Under the Dome, I'm sure. I need to check out the X's. I'm looking at TVLion.com. We're going to start back over with Gafkin. Uh, the X's keeps catching my eye. I need to, ca I need to watch that. So... What I'm saying is, uh, it's, it's it, the Gafkin show was Dave's birthday, his shitty best friend has the same birthday as his wife, and his wife is very much, don't do anything for me, and then Dave is very much like, no, oh, I, I like my birthday, it's like, so what are you, what are you, what are you gonna get me, and, D and Jim is very much like, ah, oh, he wants to do something for his wife, because he loves his wife, he appreciates his wife, and then he doesn't want to do anything for Dave, because he's married with five kids, and, and, yeah, you don't want to do that, so... He's in this weird place where, like, someone's like, someone who he wants to do something for is telling him not to. Someone who he doesn't really want to is telling him to do. Um, and then there's this whole weird thing. It's a it's a weird stereotype with women that they'll be like, oh, don't do anything for me. But they really want you to, uh, which I think is shitty. And I, I think it's it's better if you're just with someone who's honest with you about things, which was kind of a point of it, was that she could be honest with Jim. Um, and yay. Um, even though it's still, even though it's what she really wanted, it's still kind of <laughs> in the ass, which is funny enough. But um, it's it's such a funny little show. I, I I can talk about it for far too long for the twenty minutes episodes that it is. Um, some and I, I hate promoting adverts or saying that an advert cost me to or do something. But occasionally, an advert does bring your attention to something that you didn't know about, which is the whole point of it. Um, where they're annoying is where they're telling you about things you already know about and you don't care. Um, no, you have to watch that Coca-Cola commercial for the 50th time, even if you don't drink Coke. Um, on MTV.com, of all places, uh, they started a Scream uh, TV series. And I love me a slasher. Uh, I, I love horror, because most because they're the most tactical movies. They're horribly performed. Um executed, uh, the tactics are horribly executed, I apologize, said that wrong, but, like, giving me a TV series of it, like, Pretty Little Liars, which they mention, um, is a great show, and this isn't Pretty Little Liars, but it's a really good nod, uh, that direction, um, and back to the original franchise, um, they even changed up what the the scream mask, they, they still have a mask, but they, they gave it more purpose, they gave it a deeper meaning, um, I don't know if it's in the same town. I don't know if that's what it is, because they said Lakewood. I don't know if it's the original town or not, to be honest with you. Um, but they have some interesting characters, and there's some characters from the very start that you're just like, you're not important, you're going to die. Or, or like, oh, you're the best friend, you're going to be held hostage, or whatever. Because um, there's like a little mean girls group, and then there's the estranged friend, the Janice Ian, if you will, um, from there. Um, and then there's, like, her friend, and there's, like, the jocks, um, and they have something going on, and then, like, the girls have their secrets, too, but in theory, they're not the murderers, because, like, as far as we can tell, they're definitely guys, but in the last episode that I did watch, which is episode four, I've seen the first four so far, I really am enjoying this, um, the, the, the Janice Ian girl, 
hate saying that because it's so similar, though. It's really it's creepy how similar it is. Um, but the little girl with the short hair, uh, she makes that exact distinction. She calls uh, an app she has or whatever and uses it for the voice change, and she shows that it can be a girl. Um, there's absolutely no reason that the Brian James killer can't be female. Um, and there's adverts where there's definitely a girl. I think it's the main girl, Audrey. Um, that's actually in the hood. Um, but if you've seen Pretty Little Liars, and they made a nod to that for a point, um, they end up going counter uh, espionage. So I think that's what's happening, is that they're going to end up dressing up like the murderer to try to catch the murderer, because I think it's going to be obvious enough that there's going to be more than one murderer. Um, it's going to be a small network at worst. And it's it's just not going to be good for anyone involved um, because people are dying. And it, it ramps up pretty quick. There's been a lot of murder in the first four. I don't even know if it's... I think it's more than one per episode. Um, or my, It's at least one per episode, which is pretty crazy because you can't keep that pace up. 